right, this is Cool Hand Mike. We're going to talk about how to do some really basic Taz Studio stuff. So let's just jump right in. I have the ROM loaded. I have BizHawk open. And go to Tools, Taz Studio. And I am going to open up a movie. I'm going to open up my The Revenge of Shinobi submission BK file. Open. It needs to be converted to a Taz project file, so click OK. Now, as you can see, it is open and the piano roll is scrolling. You click that middle button to start it playing. Now, you may see this red and green going on here. The red, the red is lag. You can't put any inputs there. It won't read it. It's pointless. The green is the uh, where you can put in inputs. The Darker green is where it's basically their safe states there. And if you see a lighter green, as you see here, that is where there's no safe states. So what happened is I put in a B here so it invalidates all the other safe states going down because the state changed. So this is the cursor right here. See this little blue arrow. If you have follow cursor on, that is what it's going to follow. It's going to show it. It's going to show the input as it plays. If you remove it, it stops. And if you click it, go right back to where it is. Now let's say you want to move quickly through a um, one of the movies here. You want to click the Turbo Seek. You want to have that on. See how it moves quite quickly. Now the usefulness of having this green zone here with the save states is that if you have if you put an input, it'll just automatically go there and start playing from the previous uh, green zone there. You see how it's darker than the light green? And you don't need to explicitly do anything with that, just know that's how it works with that. Um, so if you want to go frame by frame, you click here. I'm gonna go back. Click here. If you want to go to like the previous like markers, you would use these, these double arrows. The markers are down here on the bottom right. You can create them just by double clicking the uh, frame number. Remember when you're trying to move around, you want to click on this white bar on the side. Now let's talk about some basic inputs. You've seen me click around. That's one way of putting an input. Here is like putting in a left input, a B. Now let's say I want to put a lot of left inputs. Just click and you can drag. That's one way. If you don't want to like at, click each one, so clicking and dragging is very useful. You can also remove them by clicking one and then dragging past back over it. So you want to have another way of putting in lots of inputs is to highlight um, these inputs here. Shift, so you select both of them. Um, shift click. You can do copy and paste. That does not insert frames, by the way. It's only just overwriting it. You One hotkey that is great to know is Control Z. Just like many other programs, it undoes what was done. So another thing you could do here is you can clone. If you want to have the selected frames just copied and then inserted below it, it's very useful. I like it a lot. Let's say you want to remove. Um, a lot of frames here. Let's say you didn't like what was going on here. So you can shift click, right click, and then do clear. As you can see, it doesn't delete the frames, but it just clears whatever input was there again. If you do want to completely remove them, you'd right click and click delete, which does shift all of the frames up. 
There is another way of doing uh, an input where you can click up here. As you can see, it's like kind of putting it in and removing it if you click here. Um, and that's about the ways that you can put an input. It, it's quite simple with that. And as far as basic uh, Taz Studio manipulation goes, that's it. We'll talk about branches a little later, but you're all set. Now let's say if you really like this movie, you can click save and export to BK. And it'll create the BK file wherever that TAS project folder is. One other option you may want to modify is to set the autosave interval. I have set it to 1800 instead of just every two minutes because I do not want it bothering me every two minutes. And I don't think you do either. And let's say you another thing you may want to remove is all this extraneous input for player two. As you can see, the input is uh, doubled because it's showing a second player. You go to columns and click show player two and it will remove all of that, which can give you a little more screen space. And as far as that goes, you're set.